than that. Come on, church. You can do better than that. Amen. Amen. It's a privilege and an honor to introduce to some and present to others our speaker this morning, none other than our own, very own, Elder Michael Gooch. After the next election, let's receive him by saying, praise the Lord.
Church, say amen. Let us pray. Father, how grateful we are for this day. We're thankful for your grace, your mercy. Thankful for your love. God, we declare on today this is the day that you have made. And we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. God, help me to say it right. Help your people to hear it right so that we all can get it right. All that I am, I am because of thee. And all that I'm not, I'm not because of me. Let the words in my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord on today. Amen. For he is worthy to be praised. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We greet you with Jesus joy this beautiful Sunday morning. To my shepherd, my pastor, who I honor and recognize on today. To my brother beloved, Elder Helms, to the deacons of this church, to the trustees of our church, to you, family and friends, what a joy it is to be here in God's service. One more time. Amen. Some of us need to understand that God didn't have to wake us up this morning, but he did anyway. And we ought to be grateful for another day and to be in his service. Amen. We won't be long on today. We are fully aware of the conditions that we are in. And we want to be respectful to each of you, especially for those who may have several health challenges. Uh, where well, this is not so conducive for you. But there is a word from the Lord we want to look at. We don't want to shortchange God. Amen. 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 He puts up with us every day. Amen. Amen. There's a word that comes from the book of Exodus. The historical account, the book of Exodus, the second book of the Bible. Chapter 17, if you would, if you are physically able, stand for the reading of these seven verses. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. That translation can be found on the screen behind me. Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. At the Lord's command, the whole community of Israel left the wilderness of sin. That word sin in several translations can be understood as Sinai, not sin as we know it. And moved from the place to place. Eventually, they camped at Rephidim, but there was no water there for the people to drink. So once more, the people complained against Moses Give us water to drink, they demanded. Quiet, Moses replied. Why are you complaining against me? And why are you testing the Lord? But tormented by thirst, they continued to argue with Moses. Why did you bring us out in Egypt? Are you trying to kill us, our children? And our livestock with thirst. Then Moses cried out to the Lord. What shall I do with these people? They're ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses. Walk out in front of the people. Take your staff. The one you used when you struck the water at the Nile. And call some of the elders to join you. I will stand before you on the rock at Mount Sinai. Strike the rock, and the water will come gushing out. Then the people will be able to drink. So Moses struck the rock, as he was told, and water gushed out of as the elders looked on. Moses named that place Massa, which means test, and Meribeth, which means arguing, because the people of Israel argued with Moses and tested the Lord, saying, 
Is the Lord here with us or not? I want to talk from the subject, the rock in a weary land. The rock in a weary land. Tests are simply assessments, not just to determine one's knowledge, but tests are used to measure one's reliability and authenticity. Tests are used not just for knowledge base, but they're used to measure one's reliability and authenticity. Could it be a test that you're faced with on today? Could it be? Simply a test. Here's the truth of it, y'all. God is tired of playing church. He's tired of playing church. He's tired of watching us go through the motions. He's tired of all of the lip service and no action. Tests are there to validate or assess your reliability and authenticity. The truth of the matter is, y'all, is this. God sends tests into our lives to see who we say that we really are. God permits struggle, strife, trials, and troubles into our lives to assess, to see who we say we really are. Amen. Amen. It's only a test. God has heard your shout. He has seen your shout. He has heard your praise. And now is the time to be assessed to see if you are who you say you really are. Could it be a test? The narrative is quite simple. The children of Israel are on the Sinai Peninsula. They're in the wilderness. They come to a resting place called Rephidim. There is no water there to drink. They grumble and complain at Moses and they threaten to stone him. The narrative says that Moses comes to God with a complaint and makes God aware as if God didn't know that the people wanted to kill him. God tells his servant Take your rod, the same rod, and take some of the elders. Stand in front of them, hit the rock at Sinai, and water will come out. And the text says that Moses named that place after the miracle that God would perform. That's the story. 
and let's back it up. Because I believe there are some things that God wants to share with us on today. And we can all go home and enjoy the air conditioning together. (laughs) Brothers and sisters, I believe that preaching is simple. And so I'm going to make it very simple for you on today. This is what you tell your friends and family and people that you know that don't go to church that ask you what the preacher talked about on today. This is what you tell them. Y'all ready? Here it is. God blesses us not because of us, but in spite of us. That's the thesis. That's the proposition of this sermon, that God blesses us, not because of us, but in spite of us. Translation, God looks past our faults and continues to meet us at every point of our need. Okay, y'all acting like you know what I'm talking about, so let me give it to you. God acts like he didn't see what you did. And God acts like he didn't hear what you said. And God acts like he didn't know what you originally were thinking about doing. And he looks past that with a blind eye and gives you what you don't deserve. Lord have mercy. I wish I had some honest people in here because the problem of the church is we're too saved where we can't be honest. And we want to be holy and can't be honest. And you can't have one without the other. So you might as well just get with me on today and testify that God is so gracious, that God is so good, that he continues to give us grace and give us things that we necessarily don't deserve. God is so kind that he blesses us not because of us but in spite of us which says that everything I receive sister Tara is not about me but it's about the goodness of God that God blesses me not because I'm good but God blesses me because he's good the goodness of God is predicated on the character and nature of God because it is a nature and part of God that he cannot deny of himself in other words if God could be anything else he couldn't be anything but good Lord have mercy I wish I had half a church that if God wanted to be bad God couldn't be bad because he's already good You see, I've messed up enough in life to thank God for his goodness. Because I'm not like some of y'all who did it always right. Who said the right thing at the right time. Who didn't do something I shouldn't have been doing. But I was one of those who were hard-headed, disobedient, and rebellious. And God still blessed me in spite of me. Here it is. Text says that the children of Israel, Bishop, are at the Sinai Peninsula, and they stop at the resting point called Repida. Now, here's what you don't see, Lemmy. Check this out. Repida was a traditional stopping and resting point where water should have been there. So they went to a place expecting something that should have already been there but wasn't there. How do you handle life 
when you do something or receive something that you did not expect. Or better yet, how do you handle life? When you go to a place expecting one thing but get something else. And the text says that they grumbled and complained and thought about stoning Moses. Then let me show you how faithful and good God is. Exodus chapter 14. God emancipates them from Egyptian slavery. The Bible said in early in Exodus that God heard the cry of his people and delivered them from Egypt. Exodus chapter 15. God brought them to walk tomorrow and allowed them to drink the bitter water from Marah and made the water sweet. In Exodus chapter 16, God blessed them with manna and quail because they complained in the wilderness that they didn't have nothing to eat. And here in Exodus chapter 17, they're complaining again about where they are when they can't get what they need. Somebody needs to remind Israel that if God can do it then, God can do it now. And somebody needs to remind you that if God can do it then, God can still do it today. Is there anybody in here that's crazy enough to give God praise and thanks to know that if God blessed you then, God will take care of you now. That there's nothing that God can't do that he hasn't already done. That God's track record is so faithful and so credible and so reliable that you can trust him with the most difficult things in your life. In a world that's filled with hate and racism and social injustice, we can still as a people, come on, come here, trust God. Where young black boys are shot and killed when they are unarmed, we can still trust God when children and babies and teachers are slaughtered in schools. When they go to school to get education, we can still trust God. When churches are scandalous and doing everything but doing what they're supposed to be doing, we can still trust God. come to Repita and they ain't got no water. They thirsted like I am. With no water. Have you ever been there? I mean, really. That you were expecting one thing, but God gave you something else. And here's the miracle of it, y'all, that if God would have given us what we were expecting, some of us wouldn't be here today. Lord, have mercy. That you ought to be glad that God didn't give you what you thought you needed or wanted, that God gave you what he needed for you to have. And some of us need to give God praise and thanks because God is always looking out for us and that God always has our best interest. And the children of Israel complained. Who am I talking to on today? That all you ever do and that all you've been doing lately is complaining. It's too hot. And God sends rain, it's too much rain. You don't have a job. God gives you a job and you don't want to go to work. And you complain about your job. Gas is too high, but God gives you a car to put gas in. And then God still gives you the money to get the high gas. And you complain about how gas is. We're always complaining about something, and God is teaching us that we need to learn how to be grateful for what everything that God has given to us.
Because here's the punchline. You don't have to believe me. Just keep living. It could be worse. As a matter of fact, it should be worse. Because we are not deserving of anything that God gives us. But again, God looks past what we do and blesses us with what we don't necessarily don't deserve. Complain. And just like good church folk, they want to shift their complaint and blame somebody for it. The man that God sent to emancipate them from Egypt. Now they want to stone him. Watch Moses. Moses says, listen, God. These Negroes get ready to kill me. I don't care what you say. That's us. That's us in this text. Because you know how we get that. Hey, man, you brought me out here. I at least had water in Egypt. But I'm free. And I ain't got what I need. Now, here it is. Here it is. Y'all don't tell nobody. This is our secret. They were delivered physically from Egypt. But Egypt was still in them. Which says you can't have deliverance until you have deliverance. You can't have uh, deliverance until you have development. Come on, yeah, yeah. Break it down. Because God has to keep delivering you from the things that God is developing you from. Okay, here it is. The less time God has to spend developing you is the less time he has to spend delivering you. You see, some of us don't need deliverance. We need development. Because God has already given us deliverance in our development. We are looking at something else and trying to want something else, and God has given us what we need. Their mentality was still in Egypt, but their bodies were in a different place. Who am I talking to on today? You can't experience the goodness of God and appreciate what God is doing because God is developing you right now. Because your mind is still back then and way back then. The text is trying to tell us, y'all, we can't go to the promised land holding on to stuff. There are some things that we just got to let go of. It happened. You can't do nothing about it. You can't change it. So let it go. We got to learn how to move forward so that we can experience everything that God has for us. Here we are. They finna stone Moses. Finna get him, John. Moses said, God, I need you to help me out here. <laughs> need you to help your boy out. God shows up. Says, Moses, all right, here we go. This is what we do. Give me seven minutes and I'm done. Take that same stick that you used to strike the Nile. Hit that rock. I'm going to send water out of it. They're going to drink. Y'all going to live to see another day. Here it is. <sighs> Moses, in the midst of being frustrated and being plotted to be killed, first of all, knows who to go to. Don't miss that. Because when you are in a season of your life where things are not really making sense and the pressure is on and where things need to be, they're not, you got to know how to go to God. And you can't allow the criticisms 
and the complaints of others to push you in a different direction. You got to know where your strength and where your help comes from. Because all of you know, and all of you have been long enough to know, that life is filled with swift transitions. And that life is filled with storms and trials and ups and downs. And you got to know who your anchor is and who to go to in the time of trouble. Moses goes to God. Here it is, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 2 through 13. Moses hits the rock twice. There are two instances where Moses strikes the rock. This is the first one in Exodus chapter 17. He tells, God tells Moses to hit the rock once. Which says to us that it only takes God one time to step in and do what needs to be done. That it don't require a lot of work for God to do what needs to be done. All it requires is for us to be what? Obedient. The deliverance and the water that the people needed came through the obedience of Moses. And what I'm trying to tell you if you wake up is that your deliverance and what you need from God is nigh and all you have to do is obey. Your blessing is tied to your obedience. And the reason why you are not receiving what God has for you is because you're not obedient. Flash. Water came from the rock, and they all drunk from the rock. Now, here it is. God used an inanimate object to bless his people. What does this say? That God can use anything at any time to do what needs to be done. The rod that Moses had in his hand symbolizes God's sovereignty. And simply what it says is, here it is. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm done. This is what it says. The whole time. Moses had what the people needed in his hand because the rod symbolized the sovereignty of God and the sovereignty of God says that God is so powerful that God can do anything at any time at anywhere to bless his people I'm out of here y'all I appreciate you thank you for staying in the heat with me but I want to let somebody know That the God we serve is a rock in a weary land. That the God we serve is that rock in a weary land. And the text says that Moses took the rock and he took the staff and that he hit the rock and water came from the rock. And the text says that all the people begin to drink from the water. And I want to let somebody know that you might be in the wilderness, that you might be in a dry place, that you might be in a place of uncertainty. But the God we serve is a rock in a weary land. The God we serve can sustain you right where you are. Jesus Christ is that rock. They put my rock inside of a rock. And one Sunday morning, that rock got up out of that rock. And now he sits at the right hand of God. Is there anybody in here that can give God praise that you know he's been your rock, your rock, your sword and shield. He's been a wheel in the middle of the wheel. I know he'll never let you down. He's just a tool that I have found. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come to praise his name. Hallelujah. I've come to praise his name. Can you give him praise 
remember being that rock in a weary land. Can you say yeah? Can you say yeah? When I need strength, he's my rock. When I can't find my way, he's my rock. When my friends don't turn on me, he's my rock. When family are far and few, he's my rock. Can you say yeah? Can you say yeah? can testify that he is a rock in the weary land. When you don't know how, he still can make a way out of no way. Thank you. Thank you, preacher. Now, the preacher is preached. I'm from the old school. They say you, you don't preach behind the preacher. Amen. But I just want to let somebody know that I know. I, I didn't need to hear him say it. I've lived long enough to know that he is a rock in the weary land. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask that we will stand as we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. Wherever you are, and I realize this, this ministry being broadcast, so wherever you are, if you don't have a relationship with the rock, I'm talking about Jesus the Christ then you need to ask him to come into your life right now Lord here I am weary and wounded but you promise to be a stabilizer in my life wherever you are if you have not accepted Christ as your personal savior this is the time this is the moment. If you're here with us today and you have not accepted him as the rock of life, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. You may be here and you've already accepted Christ as the savior of your life, but if you have not made a decision to anchor down and find a congregation, people of God, that you can use your precious divine gift with to help make this world a better place. Second Baptist, open arms of greeting. If the Lord has moved upon your heart, the Second Baptist, where you want to be, where you need to be at this moment, this time in your life, to use those precious divine gifts that God has given you, we welcome you today to come a part of Second Missionary Baptist Church. If there be one, will you come? Invitation being extended. Candidate for baptism, Christian spirits are by letter. If there be one, will you come? Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. We thank God again for the preacher. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, the preacher has preached, but you and I need to allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts so that the Word of God can become a part of our life and that the Word of God will convict us and make us better servants for him. 
Thank you again, uh, Ella Gooch, for a mighty word. Amen. The rock in the weary land. He is a rock in the weary land. Amen. I feel better up in here. Yeah. I don't know what the air conditioning is on. I have got used to the heat. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not hot anymore. Amen. And I have a coat on. Amen. I thought somebody turned the air conditioning on, Gladys. Hey, I get you get old, don't worry about it. You get where I'm at. You get old. You love heat. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being such wonderful people again. On tomorrow night, we're going to try to make sure that our air conditioner man will be out here to take care of the air. I do know he, he had to go to a funeral, and he didn't get back yesterday on time enough to, to uh, do what he needed to do to look at it again. And so we thank God for you. Pray God blessing upon you. Again, on tomorrow, uh, we have about 150 chairs coming in tomorrow. Uh, I would know uh, approximately 8 o'clock where we are on, the, the, on that schedule route. Uh, the dispatcher has my cell phone number. And once I know where we are on that schedule route, uh, I can let those who intend to help us now According to what I have experienced in the recent past, not a long past, but a recent past, that when freight companies deliver something to you, they take it off the truck themselves. It's your responsibility just to move it inside where you want to go. So we, from my recent experience, I'm saying recent, uh, that we would not need nobody to get in a truck but simply move the chair from wherever we door we tell the, the truck to park and then walk the hotel about from here to Eric. That's all I need somebody to do. So it's not, it's not no major job. So I, I, be, uh, I got some people in mind that can help us. And if you're not working tomorrow, then just hang out a couple of minutes and, uh, and give us about maybe 20 minutes of your time. That's all we need, about 20 minutes of your time. And we'll have this task behind us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Again, thank all of you. Uh, thank all of you. Get, get in your mind. We are moving. So all departments head. Uh, uh, I will let you know uh, by text or uh, 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 either email how you need to start preparing stuff and packing stuff. And, we, and we'll have the boxes for you. Don't worry about getting boxes. We'll get those boxes for you, okay? Just going to need you to volunteer. Yes, sir. Amen. We got to learn how to pour back in. I tell people, that's how Second Baptist uh, came this far. I always had preachers and pastors ask me, how do Second Baptist make it? Because we always had people who had volunteer spirits. We always had people who were willing to give above and their tithes to pour back into the ministry. And those of us who are poured back into the ministry have seen God bless us on all our levels. Amen. 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 And I'm true. I'm talking about those who really pour back into the ministry. We have seen God bless us in other parts of our life. Amen. Amen. I, I am, God has really blessed me tremendously, and I don't really regret having given one dollar to Second Baptist Amen. because God has blessed me in other areas of my life. Amen. And, I'm, and I know there's those of you who have really poured back in Second Baptist, given money over money, have seen God work in your life. If you want God to bless you, you got to learn how to pour into the, the ministry, to pour into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. God will bless you when you learn how to pour back. Amen. Amen. You can't get paid for everything. Amen. And sometimes you got to learn how to volunteer. Amen. And that's how we made it this far. Amen. We thank God for the spirit. Glad it's good to see you. Uh, glad it's our uh, resident travel. She travels all the time. Amen. Don't be looking away from me, Gladys. Amen. Amen. Gladys travel all. She's a world traveler. Amen. Amen. She always out of country, out of state somewhere. Good to see all of you. God bless you. God keep you. How many of you enjoyed the word today? How many of you really enjoyed the word today? Amen. Amen. Thank you again. We thank God for our musicians. We thank God for our praise team. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you, but let's, let's get excited. Let's get excited with what God is, is doing for us. 
and there's big things coming down the road. Amen. So let's get excited. Tell your friends, tell your neighbor, amen, that they need to be attached to a blessing that God is making known right here in Nashville. Amen. amen. Thank you. And we'll ask our preacher for the day, our, our, our Christian education minister, to come and give us uh, the benediction. Amen. And whatever announcement that he may have. Amen. Amen. Before we dismiss, we want to remind each of you that there is something that we'll be having right after service uh, to kickstart VBS. We're so grateful to have our very own sister Tara Nakruma and her husband with us on today all the way from Arizona. Amen. Amen. We've done a, such an awesome job in spearheading VBS uh, this year. We're so excited about VBS Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 6 to 8. Um, Uh, from 6 to 8, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, please, um, this, is, this is our church. Uh, we need your buy-in. We need your participation in order to make VBS successful. We can't do it without you. Bring your children, your grandchildren, your neighbor's children, and anybody's child that you can grab by the collar and drag to church. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But we just thank God for you. So for you all who are interested in staying after service, uh, please do so uh, to be a part of VBS. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for the final benediction after we have an announcement of our bishop. I failed to ask all uh, the ushers, at least a representative from the usher, and greeters, and those who are on the security team will meet with me, with Elihim, back in my office. So if you are a greeter or usher and, and on the security team, you need to see just a few minutes after in my office. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you. In your hand this way. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God that are fully revealed in Jesus Christ be yours this day. In Jesus' name, let us all sing together. Amen. Everybody, amen. Go in peace and return in love. God bless you.